old. It's verses 31 through 36. Verse 31, you shall also make a lampstand of pure gold. The last item to be described in this chapter is that of the menorah. Some translations archaically call it a candlestick, but it is much more appropriately called a lampstand. The word menorah is introduced into the Bible here. It is essentially the same as the word ner or lamp. You can hear it in there, menorah. Thus, the menorah is literally a lamp bearer. This menorah, like the overlay of the ark, the entirety of the mercy seat, the overlay of the table of showbread, and the utensils for the table of showbread was to be made of zahav tahor, or gold pure. Again, as before, the symbolism remains constant. Zahav, or gold, is the finest of the biblical metals. It indicates purity and holiness, but even more, it represents royalty, kings, and kingdoms. Gold is both a metal and a color, and both are associated with kingship. It is also considered an incorruptible metal. The adjective tahor, or pure, comes from the verb tahur, which means pure in a physical, chemical, ceremonial, or moral sense. In this, we can see that the gold is to be completely undefiled in any way. It thus represents that which is divine, and so it pictures Christ's deity and perfect purity in all ways, physical, moral, etc. Verse 31 going on, the lampstand shall be of hammered work. Like the mercy seat, which sat on the Ark of the Covenant, the lampstand was to be made of hammered work. Mikshah, or hammered work, comes from the word mikshe, which means a fancy hairdo. Therefore, it could be the turning of metal, like the braids of hair, or it could be a hammering of metal for shaping. As was seen from the terminology used in the making of the mercy seat, it is more likely a hammering of metal than a turning of metal. The skilled hands of a craftsman were to shape the menorah until it was complete and ready to be used. <laughs>